Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, yesterday, we read about fish. And we learned that fish make up the very largest group of the five vertebrate groups of animals. Where do fish live? That's right, in the water. They live in fresh water and in salt water. So what are some of the main characteristics of fish? How do you know when you see that picture that that is a fish? That's what I'm asking for. Some of the things you can see, some of the things you can't see because they're on the inside. But there are some things that you can see on the outside of a fish. Fish are aquatic. What does aquatic mean? You'll need to know that word. Aquatic. Aquatic means they something lives in water. They are cold-blooded, which means their body temperature changes with their environment. They breathe using gills, which means they can't breathe regular air. They are still getting oxygen like people with lungs and animals with lungs get oxygen, but they must get their oxygen from the water. They are able to move through the water using fins and tails and most reproduce by spawning eggs. In today's read aloud, we're gonna learn about another group of animals called amphibians. The word amphibian means living two lives. Huh, I only get to live one life. But living two lives or living in two different worlds. Think about that as we read about amphibians. Nice little review of fish as we go by. Some are and some are not fish. And here we are with our new story about amphibians. I'm back everybody and today I've brought some excellent slides of Tabitha Toad and Paolo Piranha to show you so we can compare how scientists classify them in the taxonomy of animals. Tabitha is not a fish, but she and Paolo are similar in many ways. It's true that Tabitha and Paolo don't look very much alike. But as the saying goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. Do you remember? Do you know what that means? You can't always tell everything about something just by its appearance. You can't judge a book by its cover. You can't tell everything about something just by its appearance. When classifying animals, scientists, scientists often search for similarities as well as differences. One similarity between Tabitha and Paolo is that, as you know, they are both members of the animal kingdom. You've learned that scientists classify animals as cold-blooded or warm-blooded. Does anyone know to which category Tabitha belongs? Do you think her body maintains a constant internal temperature like yours? Or does her temperature adjust to her surroundings like a fish does? You're right. Her body temperature does fluctuate with her environment. So she is classified as a cold-blooded animal like Paolo. That's another way that they are similar to one another. They're both animals and they're both cold-blooded. Now let's take a closer look at Tabitha Toad. Can you tell just by looking at her whether she's cold-blooded or warm-blooded? No, but once you learn a bit more about her habits, you will understand how scientists determine that she's cold-blooded. You know that scientists also classify animals according to whether or not they have backbones. Think about what you've learned about Tabitha's backbone. Yes, there it is. Just like you and Paolo, Tabitha has vertebra, a column of bones all down her back. And who remembers what scientists call animals with backbones? She is a, can you say it, vertebrate. That's right. So, Paolo and Tabitha are both cold-blooded vertebrates. Does anyone remember any other 
fish characteristics? <laughs> Good answer. Um, make a prediction about which characteristics Tabitha share with Paolo. Do, you, do Tabitha and other toads have gills, scales, fins? Do they lay eggs or live in water? These are rather tricky questions because toads belong to a group of animal that change during their lifetimes. Remember, we learned that amphibian means living two lives or living in two worlds. They're named that because they change during their lifetimes. Their bodies change, their habits change, and their habitats change. I'm going to share lots of information with you today, so get ready for some miraculous surprises. Before we go any further, I want to introduce you, introduce the name of Tabitha Toad's group of animals. Some of you may know it already. And how do scientists classify toads? That's right, they are known as amphibians. Most amphibians spend part of their lives in water and part of their lives on land. And you remember, if amphibian means living in two worlds, one of those worlds might be the water world and one of those worlds might be the land world. Toads love water. Like all amphibians, Tabitha began her life as an aquatic animal living in water. She spends most of her time on dry land now. In fact, she loves the woodlands, but every spring she makes her way to a small freshwater pond in the wetlands to lay her eggs. That's why Tabitha was in the wetlands when I took this picture of her. Just before I took this picture, she laid a few thousand eggs in the shallow water. Toads must lay their eggs in water because their soft jelly-like coverings can easily dry out in the air. Come and see. Like fish, amphibians reproduce by spawning. Like fish, amphibians reproduce by spawning. Usually if somebody repeats themselves, it's really important to listen to what they've said. That's something that you'll need to remember. That's just a helpful hint for you. A male toad fertilized these eggs after the female deposited them in the water. Soon, many of them will hatch into larva. They almost look like necklaces. Huh, pretty. They'll hatch into larva just like fish eggs do, but most of the eggs will never hatch. Can anyone think of why this is so? There are many ways that eggs can be destroyed. They can become a tasty meal for a predator. They can be washed away in a flood or they can dry up if there's not enough rain. The very small percentage of eggs that do hatch will move on to the next stage of development. This is the larva stage of most frogs, toads, and salamanders. We call them tadpoles. Tadpoles have gills, just like fish, and they use their gills to breathe underwater. They are herbivores and eat tiny aquatic plants but they're in constant danger because other fish can swallow them whole. Most tadpoles don't survive, but those that do survive undergo, undergo a miraculous change. They morph or change into very different looking creatures with very different habits. This transformation process of changing appearance from one stage to another is called metamorphosis. You learned about metamorphosis last year when you learned about insects. <clears throat> As tadpoles grow, skins begin to cover their gills and they grow lungs so that they're able to breathe air on land. Tiny legs appear they begin to look more like land creatures as their tails disappear. Several species of frogs that live in the wet tropical rainforest skip the tadpole stage. Their eggs hatch and the young are miniature versions of the adult frogs. The Suriname toad, toad's eggs develop in 
pores on the adult's back until they emerge fully developed. Those amphibians that survive to adulthood will be hopping and crawling around on land searching for food, just like Tabitha. Plant life will no longer interest them. Instead, they'll snatch up bugs, worms, spiders, and slugs with their sticky tongues. Most adult amphibians are carnivores. Some of the toad's larger relatives, like bullfrogs, even eat small mammals and birds. The world's biggest frog is the West African Goliath frog. It is the size of a pet cat, and it eats other frogs, baby crabs, and snakes. Frogs and toads are the largest group of amphibians. Because they have so many of the same characteristics, many people have a difficult time telling them apart. The main difference between a frog and a toad is that toad's skin is a bit drier than frog's skin. Remember that although together they make up the largest group of amphibians, they are not the only group of amphibians. In order to study amphibians better, scientists classify them into three separate groups. Have you ever seen a salamander? Scientists classify salamanders and their close relative newts as a second separate category of amphibians. Perhaps you've seen these four-legged tailed animals while hiking in the woods or even in your own backyard. Sometimes salamanders are confused with lizards, but salamanders are amphibians. Lizards belong to another group of animals that we'll talk about another day. Skin is one of the amphibians' most important organs. Tabitha and other toads like her have skin that is dry and leathery. Other amphibians have slimy skin because their skin needs to stay moist in order for them to breathe. Amphibians use their lungs to breathe on land, but they also draw oxygen in through their skin. In order for this process to work properly, the skin of most amphibians must be kept moist. A word of caution here, when you handle frogs and salamanders, be sure to keep the animals moist so that their skin doesn't dry out. Otherwise, it would be hard for them to get the oxygen they need. In order to stay wet, amphibians will hop into water or crawl beneath a moist log. Most frogs, toads, and salamanders molt or shed their skins, often eating their own skins for extra nutrients once they are shed. The third and smallest group of amphibians live deep underground. Look at this picture and see if you recognize them. What do you see? It looks like a worm. But earthworms are not amphibians. Rather, these tube-like creatures, not nearly as common as earthworms, belong to a group of amphibians known as Sicilians or slow worms. They look a bit like other amphibians, only without legs. They need very wet conditions and live in tropical or warm climates only. These interesting animals range in size from only about five inches, which if you spread your fingers out, that might be five inches from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky. Or they could be five feet long. If you stood up and measured from your feet to your head, you would not be five feet tall. Some of your parents aren't even five feet tall. It's really long. Ew. Sicilians have very sharp teeth and large jaws. And guess what? Sicilians have two lungs. These legless pattern breakers live most of their lives underground, coming up only occasionally to feed. Okay, they live in the jungles, so you don't ever have to worry about seeing one unless you live in the jungles. Mm. 
crazy. Remember, they're called Sicilians. Not a fan. Most scientists generally agree that amphibians evolved from an early group of fish with lobed or fleshy fins hundreds of millions of years ago, long before the dinosaurs. Scientists continue to study fossil remains, trying to figure out the exact way in which this slow change occurred over a long period of time. Today, amphibians live everywhere on Earth except Antarctica. Because these cold-blooded vertebrates depend on moisture to live, many of them live in tropical rainforests or near rivers, lakes, and streams. Amphibians that live in cold climates become dormant as their bodies slow down in winter, burrowing deep underground or burying themselves in the top layer of mud at the bottom of ponds to stay warm. Dormant amphibians hibernate, living off stored energy for months at a time. Next time we meet, you'll learn all about the ways scientists classify snakes like Anna Anaconda. And I'll give you a hint. Remember when I said that salamanders are often mistaken for lizards, but that lizards belong to a different group of animals? Well, Anna belongs to the same group as lizards. So you'll know what that is. And we will talk about that next time. But let's answer some questions. Um, were your predictions correct about how amphibians and fish are similar or different? You could get a Venn diagram and compare and contrast. You remember a Venn diagram is two circles that intersect in the middle with a portion of each circle overlapping in the middle. Um, so amphibians have a lot of the same characteristics as fish, but there are some differences. The things that would be the same would go in the middle where both circles intersect. So amphibians and fish are the same because um, they can both live in water. They begin life in water, okay? They begin, um, amphibians and fish have gills. They reproduce by laying eggs. They are cold-blooded. They are vertebrates. But amphibians end up living on land, so that would be a difference. Fish must live entirely in water. And Amphibians' gills develop into lungs, and fish never have gills that develop into lungs. So what do we mean when we say that an amphibian morphs? Well, to, to morph means to change or trans, transform from one stage of life to the next. We have the word metamorphosis. <clears throat> and in this read aloud, you heard that an amphibian's body temperature fluctuates. What does that mean? To fluctuate means to shift back and forth. So knowing that their temperature fluctuate, what does that tell you about whether amphibians are cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Okay, we've talked about that for several days. I don't think I'm going to answer that for you. So think about it again really carefully. Let me read the question for you again and you think about it. Knowing that an amphibian's body temperature fluctuates, which means it shifts back and forth, what does that tell you about whether amphibians are cold-blooded or warm-blooded? I hope you were able to answer that. After toads become adults and live on dry land, why do they go back to the wetlands every spring? And you also heard that in places where it gets really cold, 
Some amphibians bury themselves underground and become dormant. What is meant by the word dormant? Dormant is a state of rest or inactivity. And why is that important for those animals? Sort of like estivating in the summertime, they need to hibernate in the wintertime for the same reason. They need to not dry out or freeze. In today's Read Aloud, you learned that a tadpole, a type of baby amphibian, breathes through gills like fish because it lives primarily underwater. But how do adult frogs breathe? Two ways that they breathe. We know that their gills morph into lungs, but they also breathe through their skin. So boys and girls, please be very cautious when you pick up a frog that you don't let it dry out. If it dries out, it can't breathe and it will eventually die because of that. So make sure it stays nice and wet so it can breathe properly. Thank you, see you next time.